I thought the vision, the union of sunlight it would just turn it down. It would be a mystic all the way from the church to the conference, to the union, to the division, to the general conference. They still pay me my paycheck. Yes, sir. And Edison still paying my retirement check. Yeah. And the Social Security Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I never. Yeah. And my son is in the work. Now, that's enough blessing to live the rest of my life in heaven. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I had my boy, and I don't see them here, but I have four sons, um, Michael, Stevie, Gretchen, and William. And there was a time in Chicago that we were trying to rehab a house, and we needed some money. We didn't want to get it over. And so we decided, this was winter time. Matter of fact, this is the year old Bob died. You'll know him in 87. Yeah. We had that uh, sub-zero weather that year. Remember that? It was real cold. And my boy said, we going to uh, go out there? Yeah. I said, is the man selling drugs out there? Yeah. He ain't crazy. <laughs> Let's go. So we went out on a Saturday night. It was five days before Christmas. And they were like, well, Dad, if church have a social tonight, we want to go to the social. I said, yeah, mm -hmm. this morning, you want to see something on the tree? We don't even have a tree. We don't have a tree. I said, but you know what? We're going to go out here tonight and we're going to witness a little bit. So we went out there and started camping. First hour we canvassed, we got zero. Second hour we canvassed, we got zero. zero 750 state, one way. So this guy walked to us and he said he was losing. He said, what are y'all doing? And we told him what we were doing. And he tried to sell us some perfume and all his other stuff that he was working. He was out there too, and it's cold weather. And my boy was looking at him like he's out here with perfume. And it's cold weather. And another guy was out there with incense, socks. Oh, they had all of it. He said, look, boys out there with candy. In this cold weather. So they began to look at each other and say, well, hey, we're not out there ourselves. They would look at children in the church. They weren't going out there. Mm. But then they seen these other people of the world out there. I know what you're saying. I said, well, wait a minute. I said, they don't have a word, but they out here. That's right. They said, well, Daddy, we don't go home. They went out, and this is, I have never seen this happen. They went out in about an hour and a half because it was about, oh, I said about 9.05. By 10.15, we stopped, and we counted our money. We had $150 between the four boys in that room. And we was had the message magazine, the Bible Life, the Bible Lessons, Happiness Digest. And then I said, before we go, I want y'all to look at something. Look at the cars of the people who bought the books and see what they're doing. Some of them have them on the dashboard. Some of them sit there reading. I said, so forget about the money for a minute. Look at that. Let's have prayer again. And what we're going to pray for now, that they read everything that you sold. That's right. That they take it home and give it to somebody else. That's right. That they find something in there that's going to wake them up. I said, that's why you was out here. Some of the people may have been going to get some drugs. Going to a prostitute. Going here, going there, going to a chapel. But they may read some of that book and they stop it. Tonight, that's when they parted. But they got the books in their hands. And they said, did it right? It was worth it. I said, yes, we have the money, but look at that. Look at that. That's the real thing. So then we're going to hear from Sister Bowden. Did you come up this time? And Brother Bowden. From the Indiana and Chicago, that area. Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I'll talk to this morning, but I'm not. I had an experience, several experiences last year. I always like to give relevant and fresh experiences because God's do is fresh every day. I don't have to live on the last year's experience, and I'm so glad about that. Um, Thursday, I was at a store, a Kroger store, in a drug-infested community called Hallville. Set up a display, and, and God has done something very special for me of late 
He showed me how to put up my display that it just baffles me. They look so good when I take it down and we leave. It just looks like something's missing at the store. It just looks so good. But that's God. That's not me. I just go back. Well, I have, uh, we, we find drugs in the streets. That's what I tell people. People in my community think my husband and I must work for the Drug Enforcement Agency. They don't know what in the world we do. They haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> we wear uniforms and we go out every day. We leave when it's light and we come back when it's dark. And there's a large Hispanic community in our apartment complex. They're scared of us because they really think we're DEA. They really do. But I was out and I had some new brochures on the table. I not only do I have um, our publications, but I also had information regarding health and relevancy for um, 